Good morning and welcome to Holston Valley Unitarian Universalist Virtual Church. My name is Tish Cashton and I am glad that we can get together even though we cannot be together. Today, our minister, the Reverend Jeff Breer, brings us some ideas, both modern and postmodern, about our faith. To accompany the lighting of the chalice, Beth Calvert and I bring you the words of Stephen Schick. When the vanquished forget vengeance, then my heart will rejoice. When the greedy share their wealth, then my heart will rejoice. When success is ours and ours means everyone's, then my heart will rejoice. Anticipating this, I will rejoice in shaping victories of love. Anticipating this, I will rejoice in creating forgiveness. Anticipating this, I will call you my friend. Anticipating this, we, we will, will clasp, clasp hands in, in common, common struggle. struggle. We all have different reasons for gathering here each week, but we have this much in common. We work together as a church to transform ourselves, our community, and our world by sharing love, pursuing justice, and seeking wonder. For music today, Maddie Livengood brings us a traditional Scottish tune. Aaron boat song. We will sing loving kindness next. Please light a candle to dispel the darkness, to honor someone or some event, or to bring light to a memory.
My name is Jeff Breer, and I am the minister of this virtual church. I hope you are safe and well. Please wear your mask in public, avoid large indoor gatherings, and keep your distance from other people. I think it's convenient to divide history into several periods that begin at one point, have certain characteristics, and then end at another point. We speak about the Victorian age. We talk about the Jazz Age. We divide history into small segments so that we can better understand it. And the same goes for music, painting, literature, architecture, and many other disciplines. Even religion has historical periods, although some people don't like to think about religion changing and moving on and having different characteristics. You know, the point of some religions is to avoid progress altogether. And so I ask, what period are we in now, and how does that affect our religion? We are, I believe, firmly in the postmodern period, but many of us were born and raised at the end of the modern era, and this causes us some angst. The modern era began around the year 1500. Before the modern era was the medieval era, and before that were the Dark Ages. Now, I am speaking mostly about Western European history and culture, because even if we do not find our own personal ancestors in Western Europe, their religious ancestors are firmly a part of that part of the world. And here are some characteristics of the modern era. The self. Individuals became more important in the modern era. Before that, the king or the pope was important. God was important. But in the modern era, one's opinion, one's thought, and one's self was elevated to a place of prominence in one's philosophy. That radically changes the way we look at the world because we place ourselves at the center and define everything else in relation to us. Another aspect of the modern era was reason. This follows directly from the first, the elevation of reason. Once we see ourselves as the center of existence, it's just a short step to impaneling our power of reason as the sole judge and jury. In the modern era, people investigated the entire world and didn't care if their conclusions aligned with church doctrine, the king's opinion, or any other authority. Universality. In the modern era, people came to believe that certain traits or ideas are universally true throughout creation. We know that the physical world is governed by universal laws like gravity, and gravity does not operate one way in Manila and another way in Miami. This sort of universal thinking informed our ideas about social structures and people. And this is what prompted us to develop ideas like human rights and equal justice under the law. And the last aspect of the modern era that I want to mention is criticism. The modern person is convinced that everything must be criticized. This is not just an attitude, it's a philosophical principle of free critical inquiry. This principle merges with all the emphasis on the self and contributes to the notion that all claims of external authority, especially from the state or the church, well, they are subject to challenge. To recap then, modernity is characterized by an awareness of self, the elevation of reason, universal claims, and criticism. And here are some aspects of the postmodern era. Disorientation. Most discussions of postmodernity emphasize the problem of disorientation. The postmodern world is fragmented. The modern world was held together by routines and rules. In the postmodern world, people have strange hours to go to work. They commute many miles to work. Maybe they have 18 jobs in 20 years. In the postmodern world, a sense of disintegration pervades our lives. There are no signposts or structures to rely on, or if there are, no one pays attention to them. So it's harder to find meaning and purpose. Everything is just sort of relative. This sense of fragmentation leads to a recognition of pluralism and diversity. Things can't be unified into a meaningful whole, but that's okay. 
no one expects them to be. The end of big stories. In the postmodern world, our traditional mythologies are less credible. Less than credible, actually, they are bankrupt. The postmodern person distrust, distrusts any sort of unifying story of our lives and our history. We are suspicious of all grand explanatory theories, whether it's God's plan, Charles Darwin's theory, or Sigmund Freud's dream. You might say, we seem to be going nowhere. I would say, we seem to be going nowhere in particular. In the postmodern world, we are no longer sure that we are moving forward, or even what forward means. The loss of certainty. In the postmodern world, the foundations have crumbled. There is no such thing as certain knowledge or ultimate truth. Things we once thought gave us firm foundations, such as human nature or common experience, we now realize are bound by language and culture and gender. What we thought was true is now recognized as our interpretation. And because of our culture, our interpretation is only partial. And it's not that each of us only has a partial view of some larger truth. No, we are not looking at the same light through different windows. We are not climbing the same mountain on different paths. In the postmodern world, there is no larger mountain. We are all wandering around on different paths on different little molehills. We each have our own truths and our own knowledge according to our own circumstances. The importance of culture and language. And the postmodern person says that our beliefs and experiences are always mediated by our culture and our language. In the postmodern world, our ideas are shaped not by reason and experience, but by our language. I must understand that my experiences are of a straight, white, cisgendered, middle-aged, highly educated urban male living in early 21st century North America. Another aspect of the postmodern era, there are no brown boundaries. Postmodern thinking tends to dissolve boundaries that once were crystal clear. This is evident in such areas as manners and politics. There were boundaries. There were distinctions. Not anymore. So another recap. The postmodern era is characterized by disorientation, no big stories to tell, the loss of certainty, the importance of language and culture, and the breakdown of boundaries. In North America, and in most of the developed world, I think we slipped into the postmodern era sometime after World War II. As to when it happens, that's difficult to pin down because so many aspects of life are involved, and we are so close to the beginning of postmodernism that we may not be able to see it. For Americans, we might have entered the postmodern era when President Kennedy was assassinated, or when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, or when Elvis appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show, or when Rosa Parks didn't move. It seems to me that we were in the postmodern era, firmly in the postmodern era, when I was in Vietnam. Now, as to how this little history lesson applies to us and the title of my sermon, An Uncertain Faith, perhaps you can see why liberal, liberal religion, such as ours, is a child of the modern era. The first principle of Unitarian Universalism is the inherent worth and dignity of every individual. And now recall the first aspect of the modern era, the importance of the self. Now consider the fourth principle, a free and responsible search, and the first phrase of the fifth principle, the right of conscience. And now recall the second aspect of the modern era, the elevation of reason. Now consider the sixth principle, a goal of world community, and recall that third aspect of the modern era, claims of universality. What I'm doing right now is criticizing my own religion and culture, and that final aspect of modern culture, remember, criticism. 
Unitarian Universalism is a thoroughly modern religion, but we live in the postmodern era. No wonder we're a little uncertain. Precisely because Unitarian Universalism is a non-creedal faith, we have no central unifying ethos, no theological, theological hat rack where everybody can park their bonnet or their hat. And recall the first aspect of postmodernism? Disorientation and fragmentation. With no unifying element, we are easily disoriented and we become fragmented. Disregarding for the moment the big story that is found in the Bible, we do not have a big story that we recite now and then during the year to assure ourselves that we are a people. What we do is reinterpret other stories or make up our own. If Unitarian Universalism is a non-creedal faith, then doesn't that mean that we accept the truth of all creeds? Or phrased differently, if we are non-creedal, can we deny the truth of any other creed? And doesn't that mean that there's no once and for all truth? And another aspect of postmodernism, recall, the loss of certainty. In 2007 in Chattanooga, I recall one Sunday when I was preaching and somebody in the congregation took a cell phone call and continued talking without leaving the sanctuary. Now recall that other aspect of postmodernism, the breakdown of boundaries. Of course, we are uncertain. We are awash in a sea of postmodern questions, trying to stay afloat with a modern life ring. We adopted a modern religion, or like some, were born into it, and it does not adapt easily to our postmodern life. Of course, we're uncertain. It took a while, but I learned to live with uncertainty. I learned to be comfortable in the gray area where answers are fuzzy and not always satisfactory. Today, I'm not certain that being certain is a good idea. What can I say? I'm a postmodern boy. I used to be thoroughly modern Matthew, and now I'm uncertainly postmodern Pete. And so, speaking for myself only and not making any universal claims here, I think that if we are ever to be certain again, we must first live with some uncertainty. You know, the Centers for Disease Control, as well as the Food and Drug Administration, may have become politicized. So I re recommend that you consider that when you read or hear what they suggest. Nonetheless, wearing a mask, staying away from other people, avoiding large indoor gatherings, all that, in my opinion, is a good idea. And remember what Zig Ziglar said, you can have all you want in this life if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. benediction today is a few words about living together in hope. Stephen Schick is a former director of U.S. programs for the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee. He wrote these words, We sit anxiously knowing the time has come. Nervous fingers chisel doubt across our brows. Impatience draws fear on tight lips. Our hearts beat out the anger in our chests. Who will quiet our fingers? Who will relax our lips? Who will stop the pounding? Who will rise to speak? Who will sit to listen? Will we do this until we can move together in hope? Our time together is nearly finished, but our work is not done. 
May our spirits be renewed and our resolve strengthened as we meet the challenges of the week to come. Please help me close this service now. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and share with all the world. My name is Kim Ray, and I am happy that you could join us for this service. Please come back whenever you like. We will post another virtual church service next Sunday. Please contact the minister or the caring team if you or someone you know needs help during this time. Our services are recorded in advance, so current events may move faster than our ability to address them in a timely manner. However, you can find up-to-date information on local events, social justice issues, inspiration, and content for all ages on our Facebook page. I hope to join you at our virtual coffee hour beginning at 1130. You can find the link on our website, hvuuc.org, under the News and Events tab. If you identify as a person of color, please join the search committee today at 1230 for a Black, Indigenous, or Person of Color focus group. If you identify as a person with a disability, or if you have mobility or accessibility issues, please join the search committee next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. for a focus group to explore these issues. These events require that you register to attend and information about these events is in Congregation News under the News and Events tab on our website, hvuuc.org. To close our service, Gary McConnell has an original song, What Shall We Sing? And as you make your way through the week, remember that you are good. You are loved. We all need a little work. And we're all in this together. Praise to all that's holy for our diversity and openness to finding our commonality. The golden rule is practiced in every faith. The words may be different, but the spirit is the same. What shall we sing when we all sing together? How will ties ever stronger as justice is our stand our faces are different and yet the same we will find our place together when harmony we gain what shall we sing when we all sing together how will we sound the journey if you are wondering your heart may find